San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Sunday, August 29th. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll get to weather in just a bit with Sarah Spivey, but first we're keeping a close eye on Hurricane Ida. It's expected to be an extremely dangerous major hurricane when it hits Louisiana today. Now, local and state officials telling people to be ready for a potentially life threatening situation with high winds, heavy rain and a massive storm surge. Here's CNN's Isabel Rosales staying on top of this story. We are looking at an extremely dangerous major hurricane. Ida right now is a category four, 145 mile per hour sustained winds. Here in New Orleans, Bourbon Street in the French Quarter, we're just seeing a little bit of a light rain right now, but give it a couple of hours and conditions will certainly deteriorate. The National Weather Service says that some parts of Louisiana will be uninhabitable from weeks to months. Ida is turning into a very, very dangerous storm. As you know, uh, it's now heading straight for uh, right toward Louisiana. Ida is barreling toward Louisiana as a major hurricane, intensifying as it moves toward the Gulf Coast. The storm is going to be very severe. It'll be a category four when it makes landfall. Ida is expected to bring with it 100 plus mile per hour winds, heavy rainfall, and according to the National Hurricane Center, an extremely life threatening storm surge of 10 to 15 feet. Mandatory evacuations were ordered in parts of seven parishes. Another nine issued voluntary orders. But for New Orleans, the storm moved too fast. Time is not on our side. Therefore, the city cannot issue a mandatory evacuation because we don't have the time. Residents spent Friday and Saturday boarding up homes and businesses and gathering supplies. Those who chose to leave jammed the highways. A lot of people are scared. I'm scared. As you go from town to town, all the hotels are full, filled up. So you're just riding further and further until you find one. And on the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, Louisiana's governor is in downplaying how dangerous Ida will be. We can sum it up by saying this will be one of the strongest hurricanes to hit anywhere in Louisiana since at least the 1850s. Let me give you a little bit of context here of the topography of New Orleans, what makes it vulnerable. You can imagine New Orleans is sort of this bowl shape. Much of it is below sea level, and it's sandwiched between the Mississippi River to the south and Lake Pontchartrain to the north, not to mention multiple canals and bayous all over the place. So why does that matter? It means that there's lots of opportunities for water to get in, but not necessarily for water to get out. Live in New Orleans, I'm Isabel Rosales. And this will also be a test for New Orleans because since Hurricane Katrina 16 years ago to the day, they have made engineering improvements to the levee system. So we will wait and see exactly what kind of effects Ida is going to have uh, locally around the New Orleans area. But here is a category four Hurricane Ida right now. In fact, since Isabel's report, it's actually strengthened uh, by five miles per hour wind speed are sustained at 150 miles per hour with gusts up to 165 miles per hour. Now, Ida, although it is stronger than Hurricane Katrina was, it is not as large as Hurricane Katrina was. And so even though we're going to have very damaging and life threatening situations happening along the coast here of Louisiana, it is not as large of a storm as uh, Hurricane Katrina was. Something to consider, it is still going to be a devastating, dangerous storm, potentially even, I mean, it's only seven miles per hour off from becoming a category five hurricane, and that would be the first category five hurricane to ever hit Louisiana's coast. In fact, Hurricane Katrina, when it made landfall, was a category three hurricane. The main damage from Hurricane Katrina, of course, came when the levees broke. Now here in San Antonio, we are going to have a, a day a lot like yesterday with just a little bit less rain coverage out there. 74 degrees outside right now. Winds are calm. Coming up, we'll have more details on Ida, its exact track, and we'll talk about our rain chance in the afternoon here in San Antonio. Max. Thank you, Sarah. 
New this morning at last check, portions of 410 near Jackson Keller closed after a deadly crash involving a wrong way driver. Here's what we know right now. Police tell us around 2:20 this morning, a wrong way driver was traveling eastbound on the westbound lanes of 410. That driver hit a pickup truck head on. The driver of the pickup taken to University Hospital at last check in serious condition. As for the wrong way driver, they were pronounced dead on the scene. 410 eastbound lanes shut down for several hours as investigators and police processing the situation. Other stories we're following this morning. A man and a woman were rushed to the hospital after their plane crashed near the Bear County and Kendall County line. It happened yesterday afternoon in the Bridalwood Trail subdivision. Their exact condition still unknown at this time this morning. Neighbors told our Jaffney Gray how they jumped in to help. Within 10 seconds, they had seen a plane over my neighbor's backyard and it was it was rocking and they said it doesn't look good it's going lower and lower and they saw it go down this woman who asked not to be identified says she and her family were home when her husband and brother-in-law saw the shocking sight of what bear county officials say was a cessna airplane crashing to the ground the woman said it was a miracle they saw the plane when they did because it had fallen a couple of acres behind their neighbor's house too far for our cameras to capture where it's located it was in a grove of um, cedar trees mm. and you, you couldn't hear a thing. There was no smoke. There was no fire. You couldn't see it from any other angle. The plane was completely covered. When they finally found the plane. The plane was just like straight down right next to a tree. So it was um, the tail was up, but the rest was crumbled. My husband went and he found the two um, people still in the plane. He helped them get out and they were they were they were alive and fine, but pretty injured. At this time, it is unknown if the man and woman inside the aircraft had taken off from the Bernie Stage airfield nearby or if they were trying to land there. They were taken to the hospital. Deputies believe their injuries are not expected to be serious. Neighbors say they're just grateful the crash victim survived. There were miracles. These people's lives were in the hands of God today. And that was Jaffney Gray reporting. A spokesperson with the Bear County Sheriff's Office says the Federal Aviation Administration is investigating. Well, Lakey ISD officials announcing the district is canceling class until at least September 7th. Now, Lakey ISD, about 100 miles northwest of San Antonio, district officials say it's because they simply don't have enough teachers, staff, or substitute teachers to provide students with a quality education. And all of this is actually due to COVID. Although classes are canceled, the district is allowing all extracurricular activities to continue if there are enough staff members to manage them safely. This will include practices and competitions. If you have any questions about the situation, we have all that info right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Now to our other major story this morning. The final evacuation flights will leave the Kabul airport today. President Joe Biden announcing overnight the final pullout is now underway. U.S. officials are warning of more attacks as troops begin their exit plan yesterday. U.S. drone strikes killed three of the ISIS-K members responsible for the deadly attacks on U.S. forces. President Biden promises yesterday's strike will not be the last and has instructed commanders to use all means necessary to protect the remaining troops. Meanwhile, the 13 American heroes are making their final journeys home. Lance Corporal David Lee Espinoza of Texas joined the Marines right after high school. As a mother, you know, it's hard, but he did serve. He did do what he wanted, but it's hard. Most of the U.S. troops killed were only in their 20s. Now, meanwhile, thousands of Afghans desperate to escape the Taliban are seeking refuge here in the U.S., almost all of them unsure of what their future holds. Since the mission began, over 111,000 people have been evacuated from Afghanistan, including 5,400 Americans. Over 20,000 Afghans have come through an airbase in Germany, including the entire families, children, and even newborns. We had no other choice, so we have to leave because our life was in danger. Uh, it's a heavy burden seeing those uh, soldiers come off uh, that air medical evacuation airplane. It's a heavy burden seeing little babies that are, uh, you know, tired, that are crying, that are hungry, that are weary. And that's a heavy burden because the, each and every single one of those are my responsibility. And multiple airlines, including Delta and United, are helping bring Afghans to other countries. Now turning to the battle over voting rights, thousands of advocates marching across dozens of cities yesterday. They are calling on lawmakers to stop discussions on bills that could limit some Americans' rights to vote. 
All right, so here we go. The largest of those marches happening right there. That is Washington, D.C. Activists believe the struggle against voter suppression right now is as real as it was nearly six decades ago. That's because these marchers believe 48 states, most recently Texas on just this weekend, introduced legislation to restrict voting rights. Yesterday's rallies intended to increase pressure on Democrats and, of course, President Joe Biden. Time now, 610, 74 degrees out. And this is a live look in New Orleans this morning as Hurricane Ida slowly moves closer to land. Our Sarah Spivey is tracking the storm. Her forecast next. And included in her forecast, we're going to have what we expect here in the Alamo City. Got some drizzle yesterday. Can we see more of that today? We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. All right, we know there's a lot going on in the weather, so Sarah Spivey, what do you got? Yeah, well, first let's talk about our local forecast, right? Because that's what's going to affect a lot of San Antonians today. Uh, now, yesterday we received a good amount of rain, but it was very spotty in nature. Uh, but the areas that got a lot, got rain, got a lot of rainfall. Let's take a look up in the hill country. Pockets of two inches of rain in spots, uh, like in parts of western Comal County, just to the east of Bergheim and up near comfort about an inch of rainfall as well. But one spot around the metro area really got some very healthy rain. You can see just how spotty it was. No rain for China Grove, maybe only a few sprinkles here and there near the SeaWorld area, though one inch of rain. But look at Hollywood Park. Areas near Hollywood Park saw uh, more than four inches of rain in just two and a half hours. And so again, any rain that falls today, they will be really healthy rain producers. Uh, but we're expecting a little less coverage than we saw yesterday, about a 30% chance this afternoon for isolated showers and a few storms as well. 74 outside right now. It's 74 in Uvalde, 72 in Kerrville, 73 in New Braunfels, and 73 in Rock Springs, 79 this morning in Del Rio. Here's a look at the future cast. And again, yes, there will be some isolated showers and storms between about 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. And much like yesterday, our afternoon high temperatures will be limited in the low 90s because of surrounding rain cool air and a little extra cloud cover. So looking at your forecast for the day, humid at 10. And then in the afternoon, that's when we're going to introduce a chance for rain. I've been about a 20 to 30 percent chance. So not as much coverage as yesterday. East northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. All right, we have got a lot of moisture in the atmosphere right over us. That's why we have those healthy rain producers. One of the reasons why we have a lot of moisture is because we're sandwiched between two hurricanes. You've got Hurricane North which just skirted Puerto Vallarta, and of course, Hurricane Ida, which is a Category 4 hurricane with wind sustained right now at 150 miles per hour and gusts up to 165 miles per hour. Ida only needs to strengthen to hurricanes uh, winds of 157 to be considered a Category 5. So we're still going to be watching that carefully. A look at current wind gusts, and you can see that even New Orleans is starting to feel the effects of Ida. Wind gusts of 45 miles per hour reported there on some of the oil rigs out in the Gulf. We've seen wind gusts of up to 94 miles per hour, and that's not even close to that eye, which has the highest wind gusts in it. All right, we are seeing hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings for most of Louisiana and most of Mississippi as well. Uh, again, for the winds, but also for hurricane effects such as storm surge and lots of rain as well. It is expected to make landfall sometime late this morning or early this afternoon. And once it's over land, it'll still maintain its hurricane strength through Baton Rouge, eventually uh, bringing a lot of rain to Appalachia as well. And in fact, look at the rainfall total potentials in these areas. Three to five inches of rain through parts of the Appalachian Mountains and then five to seven through Mississippi. Uh, and finally, 15 plus inches of rain, more than a foot of rain near the New Orleans metro area possible as well on top of 10 to 15 feet of storm surge, Lake Pontchartrain, five to eight feet of uh, potential storm surge. So again, the, the updated levee system will be put to the test today with Hurricane Ida. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, only isolated rain tomorrow. Going to be hot Tuesday and Wednesday. Isolated rain returns to the forecast by Thursday through the weekend. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, 617, 74 degrees out. Well, after the break, Max is going to be breaking down and talking high school football. Here we go. Friday Night Lights, some Saturday Night Lights, too.
we'll explain. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. We saw some college football games yesterday, but the real talent was on the high school field. John J. Mustangs taking on Laredo Johnson at Gus Stadium. Opening possession, Mustangs defense, opportunistic. The quick slant caught, but ball slips out of the receiver's hand. Adrian Huerta there for the cover, 26-yard line. Jay's offense get on the field for the first time after holding penalty. Whew, pushes them back to the 36. Huerta bounces to the outside, fends off defender, diving into the end zone. Wait for it, wait for it. Beautiful dive. 36 yard score. Huerta, the senior, doing it all early on. 7 0 J. After Laredo goes three and out, Mustangs catch another break. The ball snapped over the punter's head, bouncing right into the end zone. Joshua Machado recovering it. Easy touchdown, 14 0 lead. Here's the thing Jay wins huge, 52 to nothing. Next up, we are headed to Ferris Stadium. The MacArthur Band rocking. Bramas open up their season against Marshall. Let's take a look. First quarter. Rams up 7-0, looking for more. Katashi walking right in, basically untouched. 13 yards, Marshall leads it 14-0. Next possession, keeping it on the ground. This time, Reichwein running out for tackle, getting a few blocks, and he is gone 26 yards. They're making it too easy out there. The Rams putting up 48 points. First half alone, Marshall Rams winning a shutout 61-0. All right, time to take to Kamalander Stadium. The lightning in the area delayed the start of Holmes and Lee. But here we go, first quarter. There we go. There's the first quarter. All right, 16 dropping back right there. Joaquin Ramirez over the middle, 12-yard touchdown, 7-0 lead. Vols answer with a field goal, but Holmes gets on the board. Ensuing drive. Keeper, 5-yard score. Let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final and so much more. Holmes wins big, 42 over 10 of Lee. Harper to Hannes, 14-7. Let's see, we got more? That's it. All right, there we go. Great weekend for opening kickoffs. It's exciting to have high school football back. Absolutely. Get out there, except for the lightning delay. Yeah. All good. Yeah. All right, time now, 622, 74 degrees now. Well, just ahead, things adults can do to help deal with children who have challenging behavior issues. They're cute cuddly and oh so curious, but young kids are not always on their best behavior. A lot of temper tantrums. He was running under tables, he was kicking, he was very aggressive towards staff and other peers in the classroom. Those little kind of um, more troublesome behaviors can escalate later as they get older. Developmental psychologist Ed Field studies First Step Next, a school and home intervention program that redirects focus from negative behavior to more positive behavior. The intervention focuses on getting parents and teachers to ignore negative behavior. When the child is uh, behaving appropriately, that's the time to intervene. That includes giving them a pat on the back or saying what a good job they're doing. The intervention also includes a green card game, which motivates kids by including rewards. If you have a green card, you be good and get points. Okay. If you have a red card, you don't get points. With enough points, a child gets to select a prize for the whole classroom. A study on First Step was conducted with preschoolers, parents, and teachers. After receiving First Step as compared to the control kids, they um, improved their positive social skills as well as decreased their negative. They sit down properly and they be quiet now. Field says the green card game can also be played at home. My son loves it. He actually started putting it on me. Mommy, you're acting red card. And if there is a day at school that is not so successful, you can try it again tomorrow. Another tip, don't tell your kids what not to do. Instead, distract them into doing a good thing and then praise them. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 627, 74 degrees out. Ahead in our next half hour, scam alert, the frightening call one woman received and her warning to everyone. For me. Uh, one of the very strongest storms to hit Louisiana since the 1850s. Well, good morning and welcome back. 631 this Sunday morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Like you just heard there, we know a lot of neighbors in Louisiana, they are bracing for the worst this morning. That's right. And Sarah Spivey is tracking Hurricane Ida and also 
keeping you updated on our local forecast. Yeah, so it's interesting how he said that this could be potentially the strongest storm to hit Louisiana since the 1850s. That's based on wind speed alone. Now, I, I, this is going to be a devastating storm for Louisiana. No two ways about it. There's been a lot of comparisons to Katrina because it's expected to make landfall today 16 years to the date of Katrina, but even though this storm is going to be devastating, I don't believe it's going to be another Katrina. And the reason for that is uh, because there's been some improvements to the levee system since 2005. Of course, though, as I mentioned, a very serious and life threatening storm for Louisiana happening today through the rest of the day as well. Now, a look outside. Uh, we have seen a decent amount of rainfall over the last 48 hours. Uh, you can see it's been spotty in nature. There have been the haves and the have nots. Uh, those that have gotten rain have gotten a good amount of rain. In fact, there's a spot right near the Stone Oak area that's seen almost four inches of rainfall uh, with some backyards. I'm sure getting four inches of rain in the last uh, about two days or so. First light of the day here. It's 74 degrees with some clouds outside and today we're going to be looking at temperatures climbing into the low 90s, so not as hot as it could be. And the reason for that is there are going to be some isolated showers and storms this afternoon. Again, here is category four Hurricane Ida. Now, in just the last hour or so, it's continuing to strengthen current wind speeds of 150 miles per hour. In order to become a Category 5 hurricane, it would need 157 mile per hour winds. That is possible. It's still got a lot of that warm gulf to work over before it makes landfall later on today. If that does happen, if it does become a Category 5 hurricane, that would be the first Category 5 hurricane to hit Louisiana ever. So we'll have an update on Hurricane Ida, where it's headed, and what destruction it'll bring in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now let's take you now to a live look. This is New Orleans. Picture from the Big Easy, their city cam there. Heavy rain bands from Hurricane Ida. Not yet quite there yet, but they're making their way just like Sarah Spivey talked about. And they are getting wind gusts of 45 miles per hour, so the worst is yet to come, unfortunately, for New Orleans. Yeah, and these could be the final moments before the hurricane. The Category 4 hurricane slams into the Gulf Coast. Now, state officials warning people to shelter in place this morning, wherever those stayed are right now. Uh, this is where it will be for the next 48 hours or 24 hours as they try to ride out the storm. Well, this storm is being called one of the strongest hurricanes to hit South Louisiana since the 1850s. And officials doing all they can to warn people, including the governor, Governor John Bell Edwards, warning that some areas may be uninhabitable for weeks, maybe even longer. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more. Ida continues intensifying as it approaches the Louisiana coast, forecast to become a life-threatening Category 4 hurricane before making landfall. It winds around 140 miles per hour. This will be one of the strongest hurricanes to hit anywhere in Louisiana since at least the 1850s. Officials are urging everyone to shelter in place. Homes and businesses now boarded up. Many spent Saturday waiting in long lines for gas or sandbags. We're just hoping that Monday morning comes we're not calling insurance. New Orleans airport packed with people trying to leave on Saturday. All flights scheduled to fly out on Sunday now canceled. President Biden approving an emergency declaration for Mississippi Saturday night. He had already approved one for Louisiana. Hospitals in New Orleans now sheltering in place, stocking up with 10 days of supplies, including fuel for generators. Ida is set to make landfall 16 years to the day after Katrina. Every storm is different. They all bring their own challenges. But I also want you to know that we're not the same state that we were 16 years ago. People hope the post-Katrina system of levees, pumps, and seawalls will protect the city. Well, this one's coming from the south, so it's going to be pushing water up the whole entire time. You know, so the water is my biggest concern. I survived Katrina, and I don't want to survive. And I don't want to be on the same, you know. So. Ida is expected to make landfall in Louisiana sometime Sunday afternoon or evening. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, we're going to take you back to Louisiana. It's a live look at the French Quarter in New Orleans, courtesy of Earth Camp. Now, this is usually just packed with tourists. Now, a ghost town. You can see some light rain starting to come in. We'll continue to follow this story through GMSA and look for our team coverage on Good Morning America beginning at 7.
All right, well, back here at home, new this morning at last check, portions of 410 near Jackson Keller still closed after a deadly crash involving a wrong way driver. Police tell us around 2:20 this morning, a wrong way driver traveling eastbound on the westbound lanes of 410. Now that driver crashed into a pickup truck head on. The driver of the pickup taken to University Hospital at last check in serious condition. As for the wrong way driver, pronounced dead on the scene. 410 eastbound lane shut down for multiple hours so officials could process the situation. Another story to tell you about this morning, a terrifying road rage situation ends in a shooting on the main lanes of 410. And this morning, police are still searching for who is responsible. Investigators tell us around 1015 last night, people in two vehicles became aggressive on 410 near Calabria. The suspect in a Chevy Impala pulled out a gun, fired several shots at another vehicle. The driver of the other vehicle was shot once in the hand and grazed by another bullet in the back. The victim pulled off the highway, called 911, taken to University Hospital. They are expected to be okay. He claims he didn't even know the suspect. Investigators now working to figure out who exactly is responsible. Well, a mom in panic and distress while on the phone with men who said they'd taken her daughter and would kill her unless a ransom was paid. As John Paul Barajas reports, the girl was never in danger and the call was a scam. Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your name and phone number after the beep. Seconds after her daughter didn't answer the phone, a call came in from Mexico. The call log for both reading 1056. Colleen Glass says she normally wouldn't answer, but with her child so close to the border visiting South Padre Island at the time, she picked up. Mom, some guys took me, put me in a van, and I'm scared. Then this man came on the line and said, um, we have your daughter. And if you don't do exactly what we say, you won't see her again. We will kill her. Glass explained through the trembling and tears, the young woman on the phone's voice sounded just like her daughter's. She begged them to put her daughter back on the line. He said, no, you can either talk to her now or you can see her again, but not both. According to Glass, she was then asked how much money she had in her bank account and was instructed to go pull it all out. And once she did that, they tell her how to get it into the hands of their associates. Anytime I would... Um, lapsed into a silence. He would say, what are you doing right now? You have to tell me what you're doing every second. What are you doing now? Glass spent 20 minutes on the phone with them terrified, going as far as starting her car and acting if she was driving to the bank to keep them happy before finally a family member got a hold of her daughter. Glass immediately hung up. And although no money was stolen from her, she's now lost her sense of security. I don't know that I'll ever recover from it. Um, it's going to be hard for me to let her go anywhere. Um, because they're they're very good at what they did, and they really made me believe. And that was John Paul Barajas reporting. Now, Glass hopes her story will warn other parents of this kidnapping scam call, and she also filed a police report. SAPD says if you get a call like this, contact them as soon as possible. All right, we are 17 months into this pandemic. We all remember those startling images of the long lines at the San Antonio Food Bank, and there is still a big need for help in our region. Later this morning on GMSA, the president and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper, joining us live at 8.30 a.m. We're going to be talking about equity and food insecurities, ways that the food bank is expanding, and how they are now helping with affordable housing. So don't miss it today. Leading SA, GMSA, 8.30 a.m. Time now, just about 640, 74 degrees out. We're going to take another live look in Louisiana. This is the city cam again the, of New Orleans. The final stretch before Hurricane Ida starts to impact the larger cities. Our Sarah Spivey has a closer look after the break. And back here at home, 74 degrees to start the morning. Oh, beautiful sunrise to start your Sunday. What is the rest of the day? What does a work week look like here locally? We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Obviously the topic on the mind this morning, Hurricane Ida, and we've been talking about it a lot this morning. That's right, Sarah Spivey, I know um, you've been tracking it and also our local forecast as well. Absolutely, and we are gonna have a chance for rain this afternoon again, but as we mentioned, everyone is focusing on Hurricane Ida, category four hurricane right now, but there's actually two hurricanes that are out there right now on our satellite imagery. A Nora, Hurricane Nora, Category 1 hurricane just grazed Puerto Vallarta and is expected to diminish into a remnant low here. But of course, Ida, much stronger than Nora and going to impact a very large uh, population center here, namely New Orleans and South uh, Louisiana. Now it is currently a category four hurricane, but it has been strengthening rapidly just in the last couple
couple of hours. Winds sustained at 150 miles per hour right around that eye of the hurricane with gusts of up to 165 miles per hour. If the wind sustained can reach 157, that would mean that Ida would become a category five hurricane. So we'll watch that carefully right now. Looking at wind gusts, you can see there are some oil rigs out there. Wind gusts of 62 miles per hour, but that is very far from the hurricane center. So this just goes to show you that the hurricane center, which will be moving through parts of southern uh, Louisiana when it makes landfall, that's where you get those very strong 150 mile per hour winds, 165 mile per hour wind gusts, but it could sustain wind gusts of up to 60 to 90 miles per hour well outside of the center. Right now, just starting to pick up the winds in New Orleans where wind gusts of about 40 miles per hour have been reported. Now, hurricane warnings, that's why hurricane warnings extend all the way up to Baton Rouge with tropical storm warnings for a large part of Mississippi as well. Uh, we're going to be watching this carefully because it is expected to make landfall sometime later today, potentially in the early afternoon in southern Louisiana as a category four or maybe even a category five hurricane if it can get a bit more strength here. Then moving through Baton Rouge as a hurricane, eventually becoming a category one hurricane as it moves across the Mississippi River uh, and eventually dissipating into a remnant low, but still bringing a lot of rain to parts of the Appalachian Mountains. In fact, three to five inches of rain possible in those areas, five to seven in Mississippi and out toward the Florida Panhandle. And then in some spots around Louisiana, 15 plus inches of rain near the metro area on top of potentially seven to 11 feet of storm surge and five to eight Lake Pontchartrain. Some areas of South Louisiana will be dealing, however, with 10 to 15 feet of storm surge on top of more than a foot of rain as well. So very damaging storm heading to uh, southern Louisiana today. Meanwhile, it's almost picturesque outside right now here in San Antonio, 74 degrees, 73 in New Braunfels, 77 in Hondo, 72 in Kerrville. It feels all right outside here locally. And, and again, this afternoon, we're going to have the opportunity for a few quick downpours. Now, much like yesterday, if you do happen to get a shower, that could be some heavy rain at times, but I do think that coverage will be a little less pronounced than it was yesterday. So about 30% chance for isolated showers and storms between about 2 to 7 p.m. tonight. Sun will set close to 8 and then we'll see our rain chances go down for the day. 86 at noon, 93 only for the high east northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And we'll be seeing a chance for isolated rain Monday and for most of the week as well. But again, isolated at best. So we're not going to have any widespread rainmakers in the forecast anytime soon. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 647, 74 degrees out. And just ahead, the Texans were back in action, Max. That's right, taking on the Super Bowl winning Bucks. Tom Brady even played a little bit. We're going to have a recap. Take a look outside with Trans Guide. Smooth sailing this morning there at, on the roads this early Sunday morning. The sun comes up. And we're going to take a look at our lottery numbers. Pick three, seven, four, four, fireball five, daily four, six, one, nine, nine, fireball zero. And your cash five, six, 13, 21, 29, 32. Lotto, Texas, one, nine, 25, 30, 39, 41. Are you pulling up the numbers? I'm trying to see if anyone won the 322 million. All right, well, here you go. Powerball, 12, 22, 26, 46, 59. Powerball, 26, power play two. Did you win? I didn't win, but okay. I don't know if anyone did. Could right. you share if you won? No. Okay. <laughs> Well, it is itty bitty puppy time, and Kim, can you find anyone smaller than that? Or I know, I tried. I really tried, Mike, but <laughs> this is pretty small. So this little guy, his name is Luke, and Luke is a, a chihuahua, just a, just a couple weeks old, so definitely not going to get any bigger than this, just like Mike said. Small, good lap dog. Puppy, 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 lots of puppy in him. But still plenty of energy. So he'll yes. want to play, it'll want to run around, uh, chew on, yep. on things, and still pretty good to run around the backyard with the kids, too. Yes, so. absolutely. Yep. In the backyard when they get older and they can run and play and they'll have a lot of energy, all of that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Keep what them going. Got, what you got going on? So we are definitely in need of, of volunteers. In addition, we need some dog treats. So any dog treats that you would like to bring, you can drop off to our 
Fredericksburg location. Um, we use them for our enrichment. We use them for just about any and everything. And dogs. You have, like one of those wish lists also? Yes, we so do. You, yes. Okay. Our on Amazon wish list. You can go on our website at sahumane.org slash donate. And we've got a wish list from Amazon, from Chewy, um, just in general, things that we need. Perfect way so to do easy. It exactly what you need. And yes. What you want, a couple of clicks yep. goes right to them. Yes, exactly. Right. Super easy. Well, if you'd like more information, go check out all the puppies and kitties they have over there at the San Antonio Humane Society, 4804 Fredericksburg Road. 226-7461 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Mike. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Up, Mike. But we talked about high school football. We'll talk about college. Nebraska lost to Illinois. There you go. There's a recap. But we can now talk about the pros. Football fans at NRG Stadium got a thrill because Tom Brady started in the preseason. And, boy, did he put on a show. All right, Bucks and the Texans. Houston fans not thrilled about this one. Bucks second drive. Brady throws Chris Godwin. Shout out Penn State over the middle. 24 yard touchdown. First score of the game. Brady appeared to be regular season form. Extra point with no good. Madison alum. Vincent Taylor blocked it. Man, he's pretty good at that. Bucks lead 6 0. Next up, Tampa Bay series. Ronald Jones taking the handoff. Runs right. Scores an easy 13 yard touchdown. Bucks up 13 0. Brady was done after that series. Don't want to get hurt in the preseason. Next, though, Blaine Gabbard in at QB. Throws the ball picked off by Texans. Terrence Brooks returned 12 yards. Houston's eighth forced turnover in just the preseason. Houston would tackle Gabbard in the end zone after a low snap. That's a safety, folks. Only two points. But it's their only points in the first half. Bucks led it 16 to 2. Third quarter, one play after recovering. The Bucks fumble. Davis Mills finds Nico Collins, 11 yard touchdown. Two point conversion was good. The Texans only trailed 16 to 10 at that point. Here we go, though. This is the final. Bucks win 23 to 16. Houston forced three more turnovers, but had five of their own. All right, time to talk about the other pro Texas team. Dallas Cowboys are wrapping up their four game preseason today with Jacksonville Jaguars at noon at AT&T Stadium. They're going to be hosting the number one pick. The boys starters not expected to start, not expected to play. Mostly reverse, reserves the entire game. Cornerback, rookie cornerback, Kelvin Joseph. Nashawn Wright having a great preseason. Stephen Jones recently said Joseph and Wright are neck and neck. Joseph selected in the second round, Wright in the third round. Wright asked how competitive is the Cowboys secondary? That's very competitive. Uh, I mean, you have Trey and AB who are our, our vets, um, our older guys, and then me and Fat just kind of just pushing the, just pushing the uh, pace. So, uh, Definitely competitive. All right. Well, we can't talk about the Cowboys without the coaching. Secondary coach Joe Witt Jr. will call the defense tomorrow. D.C. Dan Quinn still in COVID protocol. Head coach Mike McCarthy said 30 players will not dress for the Jags game. Time now, 655, 74 degrees now. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, Hurricane Ida explosively intensifying overnight into a Category 4 hurricane with 140 mile per hour winds. The storm expected to make landfall in Louisiana in just hours, exactly 16 years after Hurricane Katrina hit. We're bringing you team coverage from on the ground. Plus the latest in Afghanistan overnight, the U.S. Embassy issuing a new security warning to U.S. citizens around Kabul. President Biden saying another terrorist attack is highly likely with evacuation still underway as the withdrawal deadline looms. And ICUs in the South overwhelmed by COVID patients, the Delta variant fueling the surge as the dangerous storm threatens to further strain the medical system. That's all ahead right here on GMA. Good morning. Welcome back. We've been talking about Hurricane Ida throughout the morning. Yeah, this is the live look at the city cam in New Orleans. You really, a lot of rain not happening right now, Sarah Spivey, kind of just kind of the calm before the storm. Exactly, the calm before the storm because we are currently seeing Hurricane Ida approach. Uh, the Gulf Coast right now is a Category 4 hurricane. This is Bourbon Street. Amazing to see it completely like a ghost town because, again, people are trying to shelter away uh, from this storm. New Orleans going to be feeling the effects of Ida starting likely late this morning and then through the day today. Here's Category 4 Hurricane Ida. Current winds of 150 miles per hour, gusts of up to 185. And, in fact, one of the buoys there just recorded a gust of 120 
miles per hour nearly. Here in San Antonio, we'll only have isolated rain in the afternoon, 93 for the high temperature. And in fact, isolated rain tomorrow, it'll be hot in the middle of the week, and then isolated rain to finish the week as well. And we'll or keep, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll keep tracking Hurricane Ida, but we also do have leading essay segment coming up at 8 a.m. That's right. We'll see you back here at 8 o'clock. Give it an hour. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Sunday, 8 o'clock this Sunday, August 29th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a moment. But first, Hurricane Ida is now a Category 4 storm with its sights set on causing devastation to Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. Now, officials have been warning of life-threatening impacts. There is a reporter on the scene. We're going to check in with her right now. We are looking at an extremely dangerous, powerful hurricane here. Just hours before the expected landfall, it is just shy of a Category 5, the maximum that we have here. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the conditions. We're in New Orleans, right? This thing is expected to land further west toward Homa. But right here, not much going on. A little bit of light rain, but what I can tell you will be happening here soon is tropical storm force winds. I just turned it into a very, very dangerous storm. As you know, uh, it's now heading straight for uh, right toward Louisiana. Ida is barreling toward Louisiana as a major hurricane, intensifying as it moves toward the Gulf Coast. The storm is going to be very severe. It'll be a category four when it makes landfall. Ida is expected to bring with it 100 plus mile per hour winds, heavy rainfall, and according to the National Hurricane Center, an extremely life threatening storm surge of 10 to 15 feet. Mandatory evacuations were ordered in parts of seven parishes. Another nine issued voluntary orders. But for New Orleans, the storm moved too fast. Time is not on our side. Therefore, the city cannot issue a mandatory evacuation because we don't have the time. Residents spent Friday and Saturday boarding up homes and businesses and gathering supplies. Those who chose to leave jammed the highways. A lot of people are scared. I'm scared. As you go from town to town, all the hotels are full, filled up. So you're just riding further and further until you find one. And on the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, Louisiana's governor is in downplaying how dangerous Ida will be. We can sum it up by saying this will be one of the strongest hurricanes to hit anywhere in Louisiana since at least the 1850s. And just now, the National Weather Service has issued a rare extreme wind warning, not here, but further along southeastern Louisiana. That wind will make its way here. Live in New Orleans, I'm Isabel Rosales. Thanks, Isabella. And yes, uh, as she was mentioning, we are expecting Ida to make landfall today in southeastern Louisiana. Here is a current look at the stats on Hurricane Ida. 150 mile per hour winds. Now these are measurements right along this eye, eye wall here. Uh, so 150 mile per hour winds with gusts of up to 185 miles per hour. It's moving northwest at about 15 miles per hour. And it is entirely possible that Ida could strengthen even a little bit more before it makes landfall later on today. It's still mainly over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. If it happens to get about seven more miles per hour on the speed, it would be a category five hurricane at the time of landfall. And by the way, Louisiana has never had a category five hurricane make landfall. Katrina was a category three. And of course, the most devastating part about Katrina was that the levees failed because of storm surge. Now, there have been improvements to the levee system in New Orleans, so uh, it's going to be a, a test of the strength of the engineering there for sure. But even right now, we've got oil rigs out in the deep ocean here, and one of those oil rigs reporting 117 mile per hour wind gust fairly close to that eye wall. And again, there's uh, still some time for this storm to unfortunately strengthen. 
And as was mentioned earlier, those highways were backed up yesterday. It is too late to evacuate right now, unfortunately. Uh, it took my friend from New Orleans to Houston 20 hours to get there yesterday. So unfortunate situation out there and we'll continue to keep you updated. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we do have some morning clouds, but we're starting to see some sun behind those clouds. It's 75 degrees, relatively calm at the moment. and. Like yesterday, we are going to have some activity on the radar in the afternoon. Now, unlike yesterday, it won't be as numerous, but we're still going to have a few showers and storms, about a 30% chance there. Uh, and wherever it does rain, the rain will come down heavy at times. In fact, I've got a look at rainfall estimates uh, from the last couple of days coming up here in just a few minutes, and we'll talk about the track of Hurricane Ida. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. At last check on the roadways, portions of 410 near Jackson Keller are once again open. They were closed early this morning for a deadly crash involving a wrong way driver. Police tell us around 2.20 this morning, a wrong way driver traveling eastbound on the westbound lanes of 410. Now that driver hit a pickup truck head on. The driver of the pickup taken to University Hospital at last check in serious condition. The wrong way driver pronounced dead at the scene. 410 eastbound lanes shut down for numerous hours throughout the morning as investigators process the scene. A terrifying road rage situation ends in a shooting on the main lanes of Loop 410 and this morning police are still searching for the suspect. Investigators tell us around 1015 last night people in two vehicles became aggressive on Loop 410 near Culebra. The suspect in a Chevy Impala pulled a gun and fired several shots at the other vehicle. The driver of the other vehicle was shot once in the hand and grazed in the back. That victim pulled off and called 911. He was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. Investigators are now working to figure out who was responsible. In your top stories this morning, two people recovering in the hospital after a small plane crash. All this happening near Bernie Stage Airfield. And the plane crashed just before three yesterday and a crash behind a home off of Bernie Stage Road and Bridalwood Trail. Still unclear why exactly the plane crashed, but deputies say a man and woman were inside that plane. They were injured from the impact, but they are still alive. Uh, one neighbor in the area who asked not to be identified said she and family were home. That's when they noticed the plane rocking the neighborhood. It crashed to the ground and when they found the plane, they rushed to help the man and woman inside. One of the neighbors telling us it was a miracle. They saw where the plane landed when they did. We ran through, got in there and we just assessed the situation and like there was no hesitation and everyone stepped up. At last check, Bear County Sheriff's deputies believe that the injured man and woman are expected to be okay. Their injury is not expected to be serious. Investigators still trying to figure out if the couple was taking off or trying to land at the airfield nearby. The Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, now investigating. Well, soldiers from the San Antonio-based U.S. Army North will provide relief efforts needed due to the wildfires in California. This comes after a request from the National Interagency Fire Center. The supporting units will be helping with the wildland fire response efforts on the Dixie Fire in the Lassen National Forest, Lassen Volcano National Park, and Plumas National Park. The soldiers will be accompanied by experienced wildland fire strike team leaders and crew bosses. Well, district officials announcing Lakey ISD canceling classes because of a surge in COVID cases in their community. Lakey ISD, about 100 miles northwest of San Antonio, the district says they will not have normal instructional activities from now until at least September 7th. This is because they say they simply do not have enough teachers, staff, or substitute staff to provide students with a quality education because of COVID. Uh, Lakey ISD says they are allowing extracurricular activities to continue if there's enough staff members to manage them. Big Tex is about to ring in the 135th State Fair of Texas, but it's going to look a lot different this year. State Fair officials are now saying masks will be required indoors and in outdoor crowded settings, regardless of your vaccine status. Officials say masks will be available at the entrance gates for people who forget to bring their own. More than 500 free hand sanitizer stations will be scattered throughout the fair. The State Fair of Texas runs September 24th through October 17th. All right, well, when there are natural disasters, blood centers help each other out with donations. And with Hurricane Ida making landfall, our local blood centers are gearing up to help our neighbors. But the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, well, they are facing a blood shortage of their own. That is why today they are hosting two blood drives, one St. Bonaventure Catholic Church happening right now until 2 p.m. The other one, New Braunfels at the Camping World from noon till 5 tonight. If you want to make an appointment, you can call the number 
right here, 210-731-5590. That number is on your screen if you have any questions about where to register, how, or any times and locations. All that info, just head to ksat.com. Time now is 809, 75 degrees out. Well, there has been an unprecedented demand for COVID-19 home test, which is causing a shortage. We explain in our next half hour. An organization here in San Antonio stepping up to help shelter animals right in the midst of what we expect to be a devastating circumstances from Hurricane Ida. We have the details next. First, let's take a look, look outside locally here in San Antonio. 75 degrees at 8.09 this morning as those clouds hang over. Sarah Spivey will not just be tracking Hurricane Ida, but she'll also have our local forecast for this Sunday when we come back. Well, the San Antonio Humane Society is stepping up to help shelter animals from Hurricane Ida. That's right. The group taking in 16 dogs to assist the Houston SPCA. Now, the team drove and met with the Houston group to transport these pups to the shelter. Areas in the San Antonio shelter will house the pets and provide bathing and to make them feel comfortable and safe. Well, the people evacuate, but you have to think about the animals that are in shelters. They're at risk, too, for being struck by the hurricane, being flooded. So the more we can get out, the better it is. And after the animals receive a clean medical check from veterinarians, they'll be available for adoption. All right, Sarah Spivey has been tracking the hurricane throughout the last couple of days. We're looking at possible devastation. Yeah, in southeastern Louisiana, definitely. And we're going to talk in detail about uh, what they can expect out there. But first, I want to talk about our weather here in San Antonio. You know, we had seen a little bit of rain yesterday in spots. It was definitely hit or miss. And those that got rain got a lot of rain. Let's look at some of these rainfall estimates over the last 24 hours, up to two inches just to the uh, east here of uh, Bergheim in Comal County in southern Comal County, north of Bolverde, about two inches of rain, as well as in parts of Comal and Kendall County, about an inch of rainfall. But there was one area, a bullseye area near Hollywood Park that received four plus inches of rain in a span of two hours yesterday. And like yesterday, we are going to have some after afternoon showers and storms out there. But unlike yesterday, I think the coverage is going to be a little bit less. We'll have a 30% chance for isolated showers and even a rumble of thunder is possible today. Uh, and where it does rain, there will be a lot of rain, but uh, again, less coverage than yesterday. Outside right now, we do have these morning stratus here around the airport, 75 degrees, uh, but the dew point is very, very high as well. So it's muggy outside, 73 in Kerrville, 73 in Rex Springs and 79 in Del Rio. Here's the future cast. You can see a few spotty showers between the hours of about 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. That is the best chance for rain. And again, the best chance is only a 30% chance, but it's still there. Uh, we'll be looking at high temperatures, though, a little bit cooler than seasonally average, low 90s for the high today because of extra cloud cover out there during the day. And uh, some areas will get some rain cooled air. 86 at noon and 93 for that afternoon high. Again, a 30% chance between two to 7 p.m. Sun will set close to 8 and we'll see the tap turn off. And, and the reason why we've had really efficient rain producers is we have a lot of Pacific, a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. There is, of course, Hurricane Ida, but also Hurricane Nora, which moved through Puerto Vallarta yesterday. It's expected to dissipate uh, eventually over the next couple of days, but everybody's focus really is on Ida. Currently a Category 4 hurricane. It strengthened overnight over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico and it will be making landfall here in southeastern Louisiana within the next few hours or so. It does have a little bit of extra time to strengthen, uh, but it, it may just make it to a category four, but still a devastating storm. And as the sun is rising in the Gulf, you can see very clearly that characteristic eye as well as these outer bands. Now along these outer bands, we have heavy rain and the potential for tornadoes, but near that eye, that's where you could get wind gusts of up to 180 five miles per hour. One rig out there reporting a gust of 117 miles per hour and even far from the center of this hurricane, we're getting wind gusts of 40 plus miles per hour. And so even outside of that eye wall, we're going to still see in southern Louisiana, southeastern Louisiana, devastating winds, 
very high storm surge and a lot of rain as well. Most of southeastern Louisiana under a hurricane warning, most of Louisiana either under a tropical storm or a hurricane warning, and even Mississippi under a tropical storm warning as well. Again, making landfall sometime in the next few hours or so, potentially as a very high end category four, borderline category five, hurricane moving through Baton Rouge as well as a hurricane and then moving across the Mississippi, eventually becoming a low pressure system, but still producing a lot of rain for the Appalachian Mountains. In fact, three to five inches of rain there, five to seven inches of rain for Mississippi and around the New Orleans area. There could be 15 plus inches of rainfall, more than a foot of rain on top of storm surge, five to eight feet Lake Ponch train area, 7 to 11 feet around New Orleans, and then 10 to 15 feet across parts of southeastern Louisiana. So a devastating hurricane heading to southeastern Louisiana. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we are going to be having temperatures climbing into the uh, upper 90s by Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week. And it looks like uh, we'll be seeing a chance for isolated showers and storms by the end of the week as well. Uh, we are going to load up the seven day forecast here. My graphics ended up freezing on the storm surge, but there you go. As you can see, isolated rain today, tomorrow afternoon, hot Tuesday and Wednesday, and isolated re rain returns Thursday through the weekend. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Just about 819, 75 degrees out. And we have a look at the French Quarter, you know, like Sarah saying, just a light rain right now, but calm before the storm. We'll continue to keep an eye on Hurricane Ida with the latest developments at our next half hour. Good morning and welcome back. If you've been with us the last 48 hours, we've seen video of gridlocked roads of I-10 from just the past 48 hours. Thousands of Louisiana residents evacuating all in anticipation of Hurricane Ida. So packing up your bags and leaving your home behind, not knowing what will happen as a powerful hurricane blows through can be extremely terrifying and nerve wracking. It's why we wanted to speak with one of our GMSA producers, Dylan Collins, who recently moved to San Antonio from Baton Rouge. Dylan, you were in Baton Rouge for 10 years, so you've yeah. been through several storms and hurricanes. I mean, I know what that's mm -hmm. like living in Corpus Christi, evacuating, yeah. leaving your home. It's terrifying. Your mom, you just spoke to her. She's on the road. Yep. How just is she doing? To, just spoke to her. She is almost to Natchez, Mississippi, just directly north of Baton Rouge is where I'm, I grew up, you know. Um, so she's going to head west once she makes it there and go to Oklahoma, try to get some safety there. But um, she is she's good. She didn't leave until this morning. And I had told her <laughs> multiple times, like, get out, get out, get out. And I guess she saw the forecast this morning and was like, yep, oh, it's time to go. But almost, so. you know, she missed some of that traffic and she's taking she bad did. roads. It so. was almost a good thing that she left today. You know, I hate to say that, but um, she definitely could have been stuck in traffic. So I'm glad that she she's making it through OK. Or facing the brunt of the storm. That too. Yeah. yeah. And it's moving a lot, a lot quicker than I think we expected. But um, yeah. No, I mean, speaking of the storm, though, 10 years, you have family, friends, grew up in that area. You know, what is it like when you see storms like this? You know, maybe not as strong as this, but past storms. What have you all done hunkering down? You know, what's the strategy? Um, I mean, for this one, I, I, I hate to say this, but I don't know if people there have really experienced what they may experience from this storm. And that's scary because, you know, people went through Katrina there and it was just devastating, but it was mainly flooding. So um, Sarah has been saying that this has winds that are crazy, right? So I think, in my opinion, I'm no expert, but I think this is just gonna, you know, be really bad for people that I know personally that have lived there. I've lived there. I think once I go back home and visit, it may look completely different. You now, know? And you were a producer, you have contacts yeah. with the news stations over there and they can't mm -hmm. leave. You know, we understand yeah. what that's like hunkering down for these storms. What's kind of the atmosphere with some of the people you're talking about those? Stations yeah, so I, I've talked to some of my old co-workers and they're all um, very concerned, as you can imagine, you know, that they have a huge duty ahead to make sure people are safe, make sure they're getting the latest information out, make sure they're getting, you know, all these stories out too. You know, people are going to go through things that they've probably never been through. And we're going to see a lot of stuff that we may have never seen. And it's just, um, I, I commend them for being able to go through this. And I'm on their team, rooting for them. And, you know, hopefully we can make it to the other side and 
have some sort of normalcy. So well, we wish them the best, and of course, your your mom and family, everyone Absolutely. who's evacuating or st unfortunately staying behind in Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Dylan Collins, thank you so much for joining us, explaining what people are going through. Time now. 825, 75 degrees out. We'll have more on Hurricane Ida and the evacuation efforts. That's still ahead on GMSA. And in our next half hour, Eric Cooper, President and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, joining us live, not only talking about the impact of the pandemic here in our community, but also strategizing, helping out those who may have to deal with that devastation caused by Hurricane Ida. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 29th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We have a busy morning, a lot to talk about, especially Hurricane Ida. That's right, guys. But locally around San Antonio, you know, we're going to have a shot at some isolated rain this afternoon. And we have had a few rain showers yesterday and the day before. In fact, here's a look at 48 hour rainfall estimates from the radar. Now that is going to show very clearly that there have been areas that have been hit or miss around San Antonio. If we could bring up those graphics, that'd be great. Perfect. Thank you guys in the back. Y'all are awesome. All right, here's a look at those rainfall amounts. You can see very clearly that there have been some that have just not seen rain, and then there have been those that have seen a lot of rainfall. In fact, that Hollywood Park Stone Oak area has seen about four inches of rain in the last 48 hours. Meanwhile, out near SeaWorld, we've had plenty of rainfall as well, but unfortunately, some areas like where I live have not really seen all that much rain, but it does look like that's been just enough to unfortunately make our mold count very high today past 14,000. This is a look at today's pollen count. So if you're having some issues with your allergies, you can know why it is the mold. The molds are very high today. Now today, as I mentioned, there is going to be a chance in the afternoon about 30% for an isolated shower or storm between the hours of about 2 to 7 p.m. While coverage is not expected to be as much as it was yesterday, if you do get some rain, it could result in one of those quick downpours that produce a decent amount of rainfall. East northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour and because temperatures are uh, pardon me because there's going to be some clouds in the area even if you don't get rain temperatures are going to be a little cooler than than what we normally see the low 90s for the high temperature today. Meanwhile of course we have been talking about category 4 hurricane Ida all morning long currently right around that eye wall the winds speeds are of 150 miles per hour with gusts of up to 185 miles per hour. This is going to be a devastating storm unfortunately for southeastern parts of Louisiana. If Ida can strengthen into a Category 5 hurricane, it would need winds of 157 miles per hour. That would be the first Category 5 hurricane to ever hit Louisiana. I'll be back with a look at where Ida is headed and what the effects from Ida will be for Southeast Louisiana, as well as a look at our future cast and to prepare you for the work week ahead. Max and Sarah. Well, thank you, Sarah. Now to the evacuations and other preparations going on right now in New Orleans amid Hurricane Ida. That's right. We've been talking about through the morning, through the weekend. ABC's Victor Okendo is there to tell us about those efforts. National Guard has been activated ahead of the storm. 5,000 soldiers are on the ground, and here are some of the 164 high water vehicles already in place, and they also have helicopters ready to assist in search and rescue. At this point, there is really no time left to evacuate, and there is a lot of concern for anyone who's going to be riding out Hurricane Ida outside of the levee protection system. The president of Jefferson Parish calling the expected storm surge unsurvivable surge in New Orleans. There was no mandatory evacuation. The mayor explaining that the storm developed so quickly they didn't have the time to issue the uh, they didn't have the mandatory 72 hours notice to issue one. We met locals making their final preparations, boarding up their businesses, getting supplies and filling up on gas. All eyes will be on the levees. They've been upgraded since they failed during Hurricane Katrina. The mayor says she is confident in the system in place, as is Louisiana's governor telling residents this is not the same state it was 16 years ago, but the system will be put to the test. He also warned that Ida will be one of the strongest storms to hit the state since the 1850s. All of this happening during what doctors described to me as the worst COVID surge since the beginning of the pandemic. But much like the levee system, hospitals here have been hardened since Katrina, updating things like water, sewage and electricity. For anyone who's going to be riding this one out, the National Weather Service warning that conditions are going to really deteriorate into the night. And once the tropical storm force winds move in, first responders will be buttoning down 
and you will be on your own. That was Victor of Kendo reporting. Well, back here at home, we are about 17 months into this pandemic. It's difficult to get those images of the long lines of the food banks, mega distributions from the start of the pandemic out of our heads. But we are far from done. There's still a huge need in our region. So joining us in today's Leading SA segment is President and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper. Good morning, Eric. Always a pleasure to have you on. Good morning. Thank you so much. You know, Max, for so long, you and I were out there at those distributions, talking to families, understanding what they were going through. And as you said, still a great need throughout this region. So many families still displaced from work. At the start of the summer, we saw some good signs as vaccines were, you know, taking hold and the economy was opening up. But now with this recent spike, we're starting to see a little more demand at the San Antonio Food Bank. Yeah, we're going to get to our community in just a moment. But as you know, most of America knows we're tracking Hurricane Ida. We've been doing so throughout the weekend, and we know this could be devastating for so many families in Louisiana. Now, as the food bank, have you guys have any discussions to prepare to help out? You bet. You know, the food bank's known for fighting that daily disaster of poverty, but when a natural disaster steps up, uh, we step up to that too. And so, um, you know, whether man-made or, or Mother Nature, uh, we work with a network of food banks throughout the United States called Feeding America. And our sister food bank there in New Orleans is going to need a lot of support. And so we will serve as a donation uh, destination, a, a staging area for food that would be shipped into the Gulf Coast. Um, and then also, if and when evacuees come into our city, we'll partner with the American Red Cross and the city of San Antonio to do meals. So please, San Antonio, stand by as we know we will be called upon. Uh, and as soon as we are, we will start to, to respond to that need. And Eric, back here at home, what does our need look like now? So, you know, it's preparing for donations management. So for a lot of uh, our role, because we're not directly into the impacted area, we'll be um, receiving food and supplies. We'll need volunteers to help sort and box and get things ready for those distributions uh, to those impacted by the storm. And then, uh, as I mentioned, if a shelter is set up, if evacuees need to come into the city and, and a, a mega shelter is set up or um, you know, housed at a hotel, uh, the food bank will be providing prepared meals. And so uh, in this time of COVID, it's been difficult with the spike in cases to see the number of volunteers needed. We're following all uh, you know, COVID-19 protocols, but if, if you can volunteer in our storm response, uh, please, we're gonna need you uh, for the next coming days. All right. Well, Eric, you know, we've been seeing people help out. And during the times of crisis, we know Texans help other Texans. We help out our community. So what has this community response been like? And what kind of volunteers specifically do you need? I mean, you have so much more than just food distribution. You have the farm. You know, there's so many capacities that people can help out. Yeah, well, you know, again, the need uh, went from 60,000 to 120,000 people a week. And the only way we've been able to meet that need is because of this incredible city that we're a part of. To see our residents respond with food donations and monetary donations, but serving on the front lines. Our tremendous volunteers have come out every week uh, over the last year and a half to make sure a neighbor in need gets food. And to me, that's been incredibly inspiring. It's, it's, um, it's humbling. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, there was so much fear um, but people were just coming out, uh, risking their own lives to serve um, a neighbor. And so uh, we need everyone. There's a place at the food bank for all ages, all abilities, uh, whether work in our kitchen, as you mentioned, Max, our farm, garden, uh, lots to do there. Uh, we also have our food distributions uh, and, and, you know, there's just going to be a lot of, of demand uh, that, if, again, we're called upon to respond to Hurricane Ida, uh, that's going to be this extra demand on top of our pandemic response and on top of the daily work that we do to help families that struggle in poverty. 
Well, Eric, thank you so much for joining us and all the hard work that San Antonio Food Bank is doing um, for this full interview or anyone that does want to help out. You can find all that information and links to the food bank on KZAT.com later this morning. Thank you, Eric. Thank you both. And happening on Wednesday, well, Max and I will be talking to Eric again. We'll be hosting a KSAC Community Town Hall to kick off Hunger Action Month. We'll be joined by Eric Cooper, the CEO of San Antonio Food Bank, and also other experts on food insecurity here in Bear County. We also want to hear from you. So if you have any questions about food insecurity, um, you can submit those questions right now to KSAC.com. The town hall will be Wednesday, September 1st at 2 p.m. on our website and streaming on our KSAC streaming app. The U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan has issued a security alert for the Kabul airport due to, quote, a specific credible threat, end quote. The security alert requests that all Americans avoid traveling to the airport and stay away from all airport gates at this time. Any U.S. civilians at the airport are warned to leave, especially those at the south gate, the gate on the northwest side, and the new Afghan ministry of the interior. The Biden administration reports that 2,000 people were evacuated from Kabul on 11 military flights yesterday. The Taliban is saying Afghans will still be free to travel out of the country once U.S. and international troops withdraw. Well, if you're having a hard time getting your hands on a COVID-19 home test, it's because there is a huge demand right now. Abbott Laboratories says its supply of their COVID-19 at home tests may be constrained in the coming weeks. Demand is growing to unprecedented levels. An Abbott spokesperson says they've scaled up manufacturing since the highly contagious Delta variant became the dominant strain. The test appears to be out of stock for online orders at Walgreens and Kroger already. Time now is 841, 76 degrees out. Well, a couple's breakup gets a big screen airtime and a dog finds his way home after four years. Coming up in today's Take a Look at This. And let's take a look outside. 76 degrees this Sunday morning here at the Alamo City. What is the rest of the day? What does your work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. 845 already this morning. It has been a long weekend for you, Sarah Spivey. Well, it's been a long weekend for those in Louisiana. They are preparing for a category four, major category four hurricane about to make landfall within the next couple of hours across southeastern Louisiana. And this is a high end category four hurricane as well. Currently, you can see on the visible satellite imagery, it's really dramatic to see the sun rising because you can see all of the features features of this very complex thunderstorm, especially that eye right there and right around the eye. That's where you have those winds sustained at 150 miles per hour with gusts of up to 185 miles per hour. It still has a few hundred miles here, about 100 miles here of warm water to strengthen a little bit more before it makes its initial landfall. So uh, it could it, it's feasible that this could be a category five hurricane by the time it makes landfall. Uh, again, it's moving northwest at about 15 miles per hour. Now we're already seeing on some of the sensors out there uh, the very strong wind gusts. There's a look at a buoy that has 112 mile per hour winds and those oil rigs at 117 mile per hour winds near that eye. And even in New Orleans right now, the winds are not all that strong gusts up to about 40 miles per hour, but the worst of the storm is yet to arrive for New Orleans and for Baton Rouge, where it is anticipated that they could get hurricane strength winds in those areas. Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lafayette, all under hurricane warnings with tropical storm warnings extending all the way up to Mississippi and as well as most of Louisiana too. Not only is it the winds that unfortunately those in Louisiana are going to have to deal with, it is a lot of rain in the area. Now, it is expected, it is expected to make landfall here within the next couple of hours. It will move across southeastern Louisiana through Baton Rouge, still as a hurricane, uh, by the overnight hours. So another thing that's really bad about this storm is that a lot of the major effects to these metro areas are going to occur in the middle of the night when it's dark outside. And we expect a lot of power outages there as well for days, if not weeks. Then. 
uh, Ida will dissipate into a low, but still bring a lot of rain for parts of the Appalachian Mountains. In fact, three to five inches of rain. Uh, and then meanwhile, around Mississippi, five to seven inches of rain with some areas near New Orleans receiving 15 plus inches of rain on top of a devastating storm surge. Now look at the storm surge potential in the marshlands, 10 to 15 feet storm uh, surge potential. Around Lake Pontchartrain, about up to eight feet of storm potential. As a lot of people have been reporting, this is going to be a test of the engineering of the new levee system there, uh, which of course was devastated during Hurricane Katrina. There's been a lot of comparisons of Ida to Katrina. They are different storms, even though Though it is a fascinating coincidence that Ida will be making landfall to the day, 16 years to the day that Hurricane Katrina did uh, in 2005. Meanwhile, outside right now around San Antonio, we've got some stratus clouds near the airport, but it's not cloudy everywhere. In fact, we're seeing clearer skies across southeast portions of Bear County. Now we are going to see these clouds break up. It's going to be a partly cloudy to mostly cloudy day. Right now we're in the 70s, but we'll be seeing those temperatures rise into the 90s. 90s. Like yesterday, between the hours of 2 to 7 p.m., there is going to be an opportunity for isolated rain. Unlike yesterday, I don't think it's going to be uh, as as rainy in the afternoon, so only a 30% chance this afternoon. But if you do get a rain shower, it could be heavy at times. These are healthy rain producers. A high temperature of 96, 93 today, rather. Uh, so even if you don't get the rain, the extra clouds out there should help temperatures to uh, be at least mild for this time of year. Isolated rain tomorrow and honestly for most of the week as well, Thursday through Saturday. But on the days that we don't get rain, Tuesday and Wednesday, it's just going to be hot. High temperatures in the upper 90s. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, well, we have. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really uh, interesting story here. So, a couple's breakup gets lots of attention when a baseball game jumbotron used it to deliver the news. Phenomenal. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's take a look at this. Breaking up is hard to do, and movies and TV prove there's no shortage of questionable ways to do it. Read it and weep, my friends. Like on a post it note or via a text message. But ill-advised or not, you can't question the effectiveness of breaking up via Jumbotron. Usually they're birthday shout outs, congratulations, happy anniversary, and we got a uh, breakup. Which is what happened in Akron, Ohio at a minor league baseball game. Stadium employees and spectators at the Akron Rubber Ducks game were surprised and reactions were mixed, but it didn't take long for the big screen breakup to hit the interwebs and go viral. And from a high-profile parting to a touching reunion years in the making. Sasha! Hi, baby! A grateful owner was reunited with her dog four years after it went missing. A Las Vegas shelter facilitated the reunion and said it was made possible thanks to a microchip in the lost dog, which they say is immensely helpful in cases like this. Four years! And finally, just in time for National Dog Day, the Transportation Security Administration has revealed the winner of its annual cutest canine contest. Alona is an explosives detection canine at McCarran International Airport and received the most votes from participants on social media. Aside from being cute as a button, get this, she's bilingual. Born in the country of Colombia, Alona knows commands in both English and Spanish. Good girl. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dogs, we don't deserve them. Amazing, two dog stores. I love it, plus Tim's kind of a savage. Oh my God, Tim, never <laughs> want to date him, geez. 821, 76 degrees out. Well, a Latina role model and faves you've seen on air here at KSAT for many years is now the focus of this week's Ahana Moment series. We are talking about our very own Jessie de Goyado. We tell her story tomorrow on GMSA. In the news you need to know before you go, portions of 410 near Jackson Keller were closed earlier this morning. They have since reopened. It's because there was a deadly crash involving a wrong way driver. Police tell us around 2.20 this morning, a wrong way driver was headed eastbound on the westbound lanes of 410. That driver crashed into a pickup truck head on. The driver of the pickup taken to University Hospital in serious condition. As for the wrong way driver, they were pronounced dead on the scene. Southeast Louisiana preparing for major category four Hurricane Ida expected to make landfall here within the next few hours. Conditions worsening for Louisiana 
uh, especially throughout the day today and overnight. Now on our pollen count today, not great news. Molds are very high past 14,000. We're going to have a few isolated showers and storms out there this afternoon, uh, but uh, temperatures should be in the low 90s. 30% chance for rain from 2 to 7 p.m. Isolated rain tomorrow and hot on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, guys. Right. Thank you, Sarah. There's Bobby. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a good Sunday.